Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much, so much to those of you who have stuck around through this like two month hiatus. <laughs> Thank you so much again for 100 subscribers. That is a real, real special road mark land thing. Roadblock? It's a real milestone for me and this community, so thank you so much for that. It really does mean a lot. It's It's been a lot of crazy stuff going on from the beginning of this year and now for all of us, for the world, we've got something crazy going on. I just wanted to take a moment today to address this reality because honestly, unless you are actually living under a rock or you're just in an area that's completely unaffected and kind of cut off from communication or don't have that available, to you, you most likely know of this virus that's been going around. It was something that just came and I don't think anyone would have guessed the effects it has now and no one was prepared for it. The question is now, how do we respond to this? For some of you, you're just now being affected or for some of you, you've been weeks quarantined. Wherever you find yourself right now, we're all in this together even if we're on totally different sides of the world, totally different walks of life. This is something Something that is strangely unifying. We're all facing this in our different ways, whether that be financially, medically, socially, whatever other way you find yourself facing this. I just want you to know that you're not alone no matter where you're from. One of the beautiful things about YouTube and the internet and an online community is that you can connect from all around the world geographically on topics that matter to you or things that are affecting you. This is one of the reasons I love YouTube and to this day so blessed by the fact that you guys are so interactive and so present and caring and willing to share especially not only on my channel but on other channels and I'm continually reminded of this as an example of my own channel on the homeschooler goes to public school video. I honestly wasn't sure how that video was going to come across you guys. I wasn't sure what people were gonna think of it but honestly I'm just way blessed beyond words. Thank you guys so much for this. It's another reminder to me that this work, the things that I might do, the videos that I might post, they're not just like my work. They're for you guys. I believe that God has wanted me to share these things with you because you know, you can't keep a good thing to yourself or a bad thing for that matter. Today we're going to talk a little bit about this virus and how we can respond to it. Specifically in remembering things and actual tangible things that you can do. Before we totally get on with the video, please hit that subscribe button down below guys if you enjoy this content or similar content. I have lots of challenge videos, lots of art videos, and just a hodgepodge of content on my channel so please hit subscribe and give this video a like if you found it helpful, encouraging, and you want me to do more content like this. Without further ado, let's get on to the video. The first way we can respond to this virus is by tangible things. Like I mentioned earlier, this virus is kind of a weirdly unifying thing for our world and I've seen since this virus has affected my community and my area so many more people outside. But it's not very warm out in my community at this time of the year and yet I've seen so many people out playing basketball with each other, usually just small families social distancing everyone. There's still been groups out. There have just been so many people getting outdoors because they've had to stay inside or they're not able to go and do the things that they normally would do. So I think this virus has made us realize that we take so many things for granted like seeing our friends or going and shopping or just going outside depending on where you are made us realize the value of things like hand sanitizer and toilet paper. I know there's some stores that are putting limits on that and I think that's a very good thing. Just please don't freak out. That's the second thing you can do, the tangible thing. Just this is hard. This is an unknown but there are several reasons not to freak out and even if you're someone who has an underlying health condition like me, I'm speaking from a person who has, an, has underlying health conditions and whose mom and sister have underlying health conditions. My mom has two kinds of auto, autoimmune disorders and so it's, it's difficult. We all have to be careful. Live your life in little ways but be considerate of others and yourselves. So even if you yourself might not be infected, just realize that there are people around you who might be infected by you. 
The third thing you can do is to not get misinformed. And I know that's really hard to do because so many sources, news sources, media outlets, social media, relatives and friends, they're telling you all sorts of things about these virus. It's not all helpful and you're not sure if it's all reliable information. My recommendation to you is to one, try to set up an appointment maybe virtually with a doctor or someone who knows what they're talking about. I know friends who are doctors, friends' moms who are doctors, so there are people even probably in your friend group who could tell you a little bit about it. Just don't panic and book yourself a doctor's appointment if you're not entirely sure about the situation. I know it's a very hard thing to distinguish because you might feel like you have the virus or you might not feel like you have the virus and then it's too late or it's too early and someone else could have taken that appointment. So just be very discerning about making doctor's appointments. That said, again, don't freak out. Freaking out will not help anything. Try to find a few solid sources of information and don't check them super often. This was a recommendation I heard from Instagram from one of the ladies I follow. She said, find one or two reliable sources of information and then don't be checking those super duper often. When we're giving ourselves information we don't need, we tend to blow things way out of proportion and get freaked out. So just be discerning and cautious and conscientious of yourself and those around you. Okay guys, so the second main way you can respond to this virus is just reminding yourselves and remembering the good things and the things that are helpful to remember in this time. Right now, there's probably hardly any greater a number of people that can relate to one single thing you're going through than this virus. Everyone is being affected by it in one way or another. Remember that your actions have consequences. So kind of like I was saying in the last point, you might not be aware that you have the virus and you might not feel the effects that you would expect to feel, but you could pass on that virus to someone else just by contact and you might not even know it. That's another scary thing about this virus. It's just important to follow what the health regulations are saying, cautious, but don't be overcome by fear because it's so, easy to be overcome by fear in a time like this. The second thing you can do is just find a great support group. Sorry guys, I had to switch over to my phone, my card filled up, but so I was saying find a good solid community online or if it's safe with some trusted friends, with your family, although I know not everyone out there has a safe family structure and that just makes my heart hurt. Everyone has the families they do for reasons, but that reason may be completely unknown to us. So find someone or some community you can connect with and you can trust. Because in times like these, we're kind of united in a way. So let's like take that connection and use that to dialogue with each other and discuss what this could mean for our lives and such. Because oftentimes thoughts, they can pile up in our head and make us so anxious. Find people you can dialogue with and trust. Also, be thankful for the healthy and pray for the sick and those who are at high risk. I know my mom is at risk. My cousin has a very close friend whose mom has a very serious autoimmune disease. Just be praying for the sick and do what you can to help out if you can run errands for people safely. There's a guy in my community who's doing that who stepped up and said he will help people who need help and if he can't help them someone else will. So do things like that. Step up in your community if you can do it safely and again just be safe. Remember that we are all in this together. Find yourself good information, find yourself good community, and we will get through this. I believe you guys. And also, if you just want to talk to each other in the comments, like, it would be really awesome if we could get a dialogue going about this on this channel, as this season for a lot of you is just really hard and difficult with everything that's going on. But try to focus on the positive things. If you focus on the positive things, you're making the situation better for yourself by taking your mind off all the things that stink about this. So one of the positives I can see coming from this that I mentioned is this in a weird way unifies us. It's getting more people outside who are healthy and relatively healthy and walking and enjoying nature. Families are becoming closer despite there being some rough 
patches. I speak from experience. It's been great being home with my family, but that's not to say we haven't had our little disagreements. So just realize too that there are healthy forms of conflict. There are healthy ways to do things. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. Subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed this content and I will try to do more things like this in the future. So stay safe, stay well. Love you guys, praying for you guys. God bless and hopefully see you next week. Bye.